Hey there, friends. Welcome back. Today we're diving into one of the most fascinating and intense stories in the Bible. It's the story of Queen Jezebel, a woman whose name has become synonymous with wickedness, deception, and rebellion against God. But as we'll see, no one, not even a queen, is above God's justice. So grab a seat and let's explore the rise and dramatic downfall of Queen Jezebel. Let's start by getting to know who Jezebel was. Jezebel was the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians, and she married King Ahab, the ruler of Israel. Now this wasn't just a political alliance Jezebel brought her foreign gods with her into Israel. She worshiped Baal, a pagan god, and soon convinced her husband and the people of Israel to turn away from the one true God and follow Baal as well. Jezebel didn't stop at just idol worship, she was fierce and ruthless. She orchestrated the killing of God's prophets and replaced them with hundreds of false prophets of Baal. Her influence over Ahab led Israel into one of its darkest spiritual times. One of the most infamous stories of Jezebel's evil comes in 1 Kings 21, when King Ahab wanted a vineyard that belonged to a man named Naboth. But Naboth refused to sell it to Ahab because it was his family's inheritance. Ahab sulked like a child, but Jezebel had no patience for that. She took matters into her own hands. Jezebel wrote letters in Ahab's name and arranged for false accusations to be made against Naboth, leading to his wrongful execution. After that, she told Ahab, go take the vineyard for yourself. This wasn't just a plot for land. It was an example of Jezebel's complete disregard for God's law in human life. She would stop at nothing to get what she wanted. But Jezebel's actions didn't go unnoticed by God. He sent the prophet Elijah to confront Ahab and deliver a message of judgment. Elijah boldly told Ahab that because of his and Jezebel's wickedness, disaster would come upon his family. But what really struck fear was the prophecy about Jezebel's end. Elijah said, dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Now, can you imagine hearing that? Jezebel had lived in power, controlling everyone around her, but God was making it clear that no one is untouchable, not even the queen. As time passed, Ahab was killed in battle and their son became king, but Jezebel remained in power, still scheming and deceiving. However, God's judgment had not been forgotten. In 2 Kings 9, we see the end of Jezebel's reign of terror. Jehu, a military commander anointed by God, was sent to bring down the house of Ahab and Jezebel. When Jehu arrived in Jezreel, Jezebel tried to charm him, dressing up and painting her eyes, but her time had come. Jehu didn't fall for her tricks. He called up to the palace windows, and a few of Jezebel's servants, sick of her wickedness, threw her down from the window. Jezebel fell to the ground and died. And just as Elijah had prophesied, dogs came and devoured her body. It was a dramatic and gruesome end, but it was the fulfillment of God's justice. So what can we learn from Jezebel's story? Well, one of the biggest lessons is that no matter how powerful or untouchable someone seems, God's justice always prevails. Jezebel used her power to do evil, manipulate others, and turn people away from God. But in the end, she couldn't escape the consequences. Proverbs 16.18 tells us that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Jezebel's pride and wickedness led to her downfall, and it's a reminder that we must live humbly, seeking God's will rather than our own selfish desires. Now, Jezebel's story is a dramatic example of what happens when pride, rebellion, and evil go unchecked. It shows us the seriousness of sin and the reality of God's justice. But the Bible is more than just a collection of warnings. It's a love story between God and His people. And at the heart of this love story is the incredible truth of repentance and mercy. You see, even though Jezebel chose a path of destruction, the same God who judged her is the same God who offers us mercy and forgiveness. While Jezebel hardened her heart and never turned back, we still have the opportunity to choose a different path. The Bible is full of stories of people who made terrible mistakes but found redemption when they turned back to God. Think about King David. He committed adultery and even arranged for someone to be killed for terrible sins. But when the prophet Nathan confronted him, David didn't harden his heart like Jezebel. Instead, he repented. He cried out to God in Psalm 51, saying, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalm 51.10 
God didn't abandon David because of his failures. In fact, David is remembered as a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he was willing to humble himself, admit his sin, and seek God's forgiveness. That's the power of repentance it restores us, no matter how far we've fallen. Now here's something important to remember. God isn't just waiting to punish us for our mistakes. He's actually waiting to forgive us, to restore us, to heal us. He's like the father in the story of the prodigal son. When his son finally came to his senses and returned home, his father ran to meet him. He didn't scold him or hold his past against him. He embraced him with open arms and celebrated his return. Luke 15, 20. That's God's heart toward us. No matter how many mistakes we've made, no matter how far we've wandered, he's ready to welcome us back with mercy and grace. But it starts with repentance, turning away from the things that lead us away from him and choosing to follow his path. Repentance isn't just about saying, I'm sorry. It's about a genuine change of heart. It's turning away from what's wrong and turning toward what's right. And when we do that, something incredible happens. God wipes the slate clean. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means He doesn't just forgive us, He purifies us. He sets us free from the weight of guilt and shame, and we can walk in the newness of life. The story of Jezebel reminds us that sin has consequences, and we can't ignore that. But it also reminds us that we don't have to follow that same path. God's arms are always open, ready to receive anyone who's willing to turn back to Him. Whether we've made small mistakes or big ones, His grace is bigger. His mercy is always available. In 2 Peter 3, 9, we're told that, the Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Isn't that amazing? God doesn't want anyone to be lost. He's patient, giving us every opportunity to come back to Him. So if you're feeling far from God today, if you're carrying the weight of mistakes, know this. It's never too late to turn back to Him. He's not angry at you. He's waiting with open arms. Like the father who welcomed the prodigal son home, God is ready to welcome you, to forgive you, and to give you a fresh start. Repentance opens the door to that new beginning, and God's mercy is always greater than our failures. It's a powerful reminder that no matter how dark our past may be, God's light of forgiveness and grace is always shining, leading us back to Him. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive into the story of Queen Jezebel. It's a tale of power, pride, and the certainty of God's justice. But remember, it's also a story that reminds us of the importance of humility and repentance in our own lives. If you found this video helpful and want to learn more about the incredible stories of the Bible and what they mean for us today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, you're joining a community of believers who are all seeking to grow in faith, wisdom, and understanding. Together, we can explore God's Word and discover how His truth still speaks to us today. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless.